Yeah. But it's very common when you look at the slave name, yeah. be something, something, don't. Hi everyone, this is Mark Peterson with the Frog Outside the Well Research Center and my guest today is my favorite YouTuber, Chad. Thank you. Hi Chad. Mm -hmm. Hi. So I was reading through some of the comments because your first video, so I wanted yeah. to see what the response yeah. was from people. Great responses. Yeah, great responses. I thought people were super friendly. I think they were very excited. Encouraging. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I was really pleased. Yeah, so a so follow-up question I had, it, what, it's not really my question, it's, it's a question I saw. People were talking about slave names and how that might affect last names in Korea. That, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And those people were right, mm -hmm. but not 100% right. Okay. There are a lot of people who didn't have surnames, mm -hmm. slaves, yeah. and when it came to the 20th century, they had to adopt a name, okay. and they uh, took on a common name rather than an unusual name. Interesting. Now, in Japan, they take an unusual name. Uh -huh. In Japan, the more unusual the name you have, the better. Okay. Uh, but not in Korea. If you have an unusual name, you're a suspect background. Okay. So you want to have a common name. Uh -huh. Thus, in Korea, you have basically 250 names. Total. Right. And in Japan, you've got 10,000 names. Wow. I mean, that is a stark, it's a, it's a stark massive, dis massive difference. difference. Yeah. And it turns out other countries are more like Japan. Uh, there's one other country that's like Korea, and that's Vietnam, mm -hmm. that has a limited number of right. names and a high concentration of names. So there was a good point that a number of the slaves took a common name, Kim and Ian Pak, mm -hmm. and Hong and Yoon and some others. So it wasn't yeah. just Kim and Ian Pak. But the people that wrote about that were wrong in a couple of ways. My th point is that actually reaffirms my thesis mm -hmm. that the stability of the society is what gives us so few okay. names. Right, right. Because uh, the, the, the slaves took on names that were already out there in great numbers. And the fact that they're 21% uh, Kim. I think it's no more than 10% of that were slaves. Okay. I think of, about of half. The of the 21%. Uh, well, half of the 21%. Oh, half the 21%. Yeah. Okay. I, think, I think maybe half of the 21% were slaves. Okay. But I think half were bona fide real Kims. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another point that a lot of people misunderstood. When they wrote in, they said, yeah, the slaves, they started making money and bought their way into a genealogy. Mm -hmm. That's a different matter. Uh, a slave can get the name Kim, E, or Pak, or Hong, or Che, or Yoon, right. but he doesn't have to be in the genealogy. He uh -oh. can just declare, this is my name. Right. And when they went to declare their name, you can declare any name you want and, say, and claim any Pongguan you want. Mm -hmm. And there used to be a gajillion number of Pongguans. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more consolidated right. now. But uh, that's another thing that people said was, not all Kims are the same because they're a different Pongguan. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Pongguan is the source of origin or where they started from. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the Pongguan split off of the earlier Pongguan. Okay. And really, Kim's almost all boil down to Suda Wang, the founder of the Kayak Kingdom, and Kim Al Ji, one of the founders of the Shila Kingdom. Okay. And you get them splitting off. Andong Kim, for example, is one of the most powerful and most interesting Kim's. Mm -hmm. But they claim to come right from the Shila. Interesting. Kingdom. So most of the Kims with a different Pongguan, you can be traced back to either Kaya, meaning Kimha, right. or Kyungju, meaning Shira. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then all these slaves that came along, they just added to the large numbers that are right. already there. Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing I want to say about slave right. names as surnames, that I think it really reinforces my theory, doesn't contradict my theory. Right. It, it's, you have this, uh, Korea had one of the longest unbroken chains of slavery of any country in the world. Really? Yeah. And this is really quite amazing because, uh, see, I've been arguing that the stability of Sheila was absorbed by the stability of Koryo, mm -hmm. and it was absorbed by the stability of Chosun, yeah. and it was really all one ruling class. Yeah. At the same time, it was all one underclass. Uh -huh. and the slaves, there was never chaos enough to free the slaves. Oh, okay. Which is another part of the same argument right. that Korea has a peaceful not a warlike mm -hmm. history. Right. The change from dynasty to dynasty was never enough to, to upset the whole apple cart and free the slaves right. and everything. So that's one thing I want to say about uh, slave names is the surnames, which touches on the thing we talked about last time. But if we're going to talk about slave names, we should yeah. talk about one other thing, and that's really okay. interesting. And that is, what were the slaves' names before they got to be named Kim or Lee or Pak uh -huh. like anybody else? Okay. That's what were the slave names like themselves. Right. And we have this. 
Uh, for example, I looked at this uh, document and I looked at a bunch of these slaves mm -hmm. looking for ones with interesting names. Mm -hmm. And just to outline what some of these interesting yeah. names are, uh, I put them in a couple of different categories. This first category are slaves with the last, with the final character se. Mm -hmm. uh, and slaves were something something se. Mm -hmm. uh, that is just the name they were. And here's two of them. Here's Chagan se. Okay. Which is basically little slave. Yeah. And here's uh, Maxe, which means the last slave or the mm -hmm. baby slave. Mm -hmm. And then here's another category of slave with this character. Do you recognize this character? It looks familiar, but I don't remember it. It's Ke. Okay. It's the Ke of Soge, like a Soge So or a, to introduce someone. Yep. But it's pronounced Ke. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the Ke of Soge, mm -hmm. and it's the Ke that's used for dog. Oh, okay. And here we have a bunch of dogs. Wow. Slaves with dog names. Wow. Yeah. This so, is not complimentary. No, not at all. But if you're a slave, you don't get to choose your name. Your owner says, your first dog. Yeah. Your onge. I don't know what an onge is. Yeah. But the, the thing is, they use Chinese characters here, mm -hmm. but they use them to represent pure Korean names. This, this next one is honge, and hon means to dedicate or offer, mm -hmm. but that's not what this hon is. Hon means wet or dripping wet. Oh. And so this is the wet dog. Yeah, that's not a... Complimentary name no, at all. Not at all. And then this is Dokke. Dokke is a, a honorable name like virtue. It's in yep. a lot of people's names. Yep. But here it might mean cake, duck. And this is Dokke, the, the, the slave that ate some duck. So they uh, call him Dokke. Hmm. Dok meaning cake. Uh, and this was my favorite one of the dogs is Chagunke. Cha, okay. yeah. Cha Gunke. Yeah. This character Cha means one who. Mm -hmm. But here it's just pronounced ja. Mm -hmm. This gun is the gun is the gun for a, a, a measure of weight, mm -hmm. like a, like two pounds worth. Mm -hmm. And so cha gun is in Korean small. Right. Okay. Cha gun Small dog. So small dog. Or yeah. this this poor girl's name is puppy. Puppy. <laughs> Puppy's not so bad, I guess, compared to wet dog. <laughs> yeah. And compared to what's coming next. Yeah. And that's this one here. That's the slaves with dong in their name. Oh no. Now I only found one. Yeah. But it's very, very common, uh -huh. one in this collection. Yeah. But it's very common when you look at slave names, yeah. to be something, something, don't. Mm -hmm. And our English speakers may not be attuned to this. It's, it's the same cognate word as we use in English as dung, you know, right. uh, as fertilizer, right. or dong. Is, uh, the words they use here, uh, the, this one is mak dong. Mak is just carelessly anywhere. Oh boy. Yeah. That's a rough name. Yeah. And other names you find with dong are ket dong. Malton. Oh boy. So this is a dog pucky, horse pucky. That, that, that's a polite way to say yeah. the, the name for these poor slaves. Now, there are some slaves that have real nice names. Here's a, a slave named Young Su. Yeah. I've How many people are named yeah. Young Su? And Kyung Su. Yeah. And here's Yen Nam. Mm -hmm. And here's Mong Hyun. Mm -hmm. uh, Mong Hyun is that's a very honorable kind of name mm -hmm. to, to dream of uh, sagely wisdom. So mm -hmm. that's great. Then they have slaves that have descriptions of something they've done or something that happened. This one's name is Hushil, the back room. And Hushil was often where the concubine lived, uh -huh. where the mistress lived. Uh, in, in Korea, men would have a mistress, but it wasn't a secret mistress. They'd bring them in the house oh, wow. and they stayed in the Hushil. Hmm. And this slave may have been a slave working in the Hushil, or it may have, he may have been born in the, hush, in the Hushil. A slave of a concubine slave can become a what's called a soja, an illegitimate son, uh -huh. uh, who's sort of half Yangban. Uh -huh. But some of these soja felt a slave status immediately. And that might be what this boy is. So, so I have a question. So yeah. we talked about, or you mentioned that, you know, they get their names potentially by something they did. So what age? Would I don't know. I, I think it happened quite young. Yeah. And some of these names are characteristics of things that kids did. Yeah. And so they, they may not have even bothered to give them a name until they're one or two years old. And at yeah. two, they got into, into the duck. And then they, and they got in duck. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I think it, in some cases it is attribute. Okay. Here, here's one that's like that too. This one's name is Black Rock. Okay. Now, what would that have been? Who knows? Maybe Chucked the kid. Chucked a black rock through a window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or found a black rock yeah. that he played with as a toy yeah. or something. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, then this one, this category is of dates. Mm -hmm. And if you can't think of anything to name somebody, you name him 92 because that's when he was born. Oh, okay. 
and this this is Im Sang born in that in that year. Yep. Now the thing about these is they they combine Chinese characters, but here this character is Mao, meaning the end. Mm -hmm. But they put this little thing on the bottom that shows that it's not Mao. It's it's a, a Duen Sori attached to it, a reinforcement mm -hmm. thing, which means it's not the Mao character. It's a Gut character it has uh, on the end. Mm -hmm. So this is Gut or Mak is probably uh, Mang Ne. Mm -hmm. uh, the last the youngest, one, little, yeah. the youngest child. Yeah, it's yeah. not a bad name either. And then here are some names that are really quite flattering, which are much more like Kisang names. Mm -hmm. uh, here, these uh, two have spring in their name. Okay. Here's South Spring mm -hmm. and Spring uh, Moon. Okay. And you know the famous uh, story of the famous lover, uh, Korean love story is Chun Hyang. Mm -hmm. yep. Hyang is fragrance, yeah. so spring fragrance. Uh -huh. You get spring in any name and it's like a that's, Kisang name. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's and, really nice. And then another Kisang style name is Nan. These two have Nan in it, meaning uh, orchid. Okay. And here's orchid virtue and orchid now. Okay. And so orchid is a good name. Now these four girls, they're all girls, uh, with these pretty names, might have been pretty girls who maybe the owner had some idea in mind. Mm -hmm. Maybe when she grows up, rather than send her off to be married, maybe she'll become a mistress. Okay. So there's th that's one of the, s the dark parts of slavery, yeah. is the misogyny of yeah. the owners taking advantage. And we see it in American slavery yeah. in the South, yeah. and, uh, and we see it in Korean slavery. Mm -hmm. And then here's an interesting category of mixing characters. I mentioned before we've had Mal and put the dead yeah. sorti symbol yeah. on it. Here's Sok or stone mm -hmm. with the ul on the bottom of it, which says this is the dol sok character that's going to be pronounced dol. Interesting. You keep the l on the bottom. Yeah. And here's a slave named dol de, and here's a slave named uh, dol guji. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what those mean. Some Koreans can figure out what these slave names mean better than than I can. Yeah. You have to have a real ta uh, knack for uh, figuring out uh, yeah. Korean names. And then here's one who has a great name. Chanduk, yeah. heavenly virtue. Sounds nice. So not, not all slaves not all have bad, bad names. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my shtick on slavery. Yeah. Uh, two ways of looking at the names. One is the names they had, right. and the other one is the way they took names in the modern right. era, and they took the names of Kim, E, Pak, Che, Chung, Yun, and the common names rather than pick up a new name like Hook, yeah. Black, or yeah. Dole. Rock. Right, right, yeah. right. They, but in, in Japan, they took unusual names like that. Yeah to have a uniqueness to their own name. Yeah. But in Korea, it's not uniqueness that you want, it's to blend in so people can't tell yeah. that you came from a slave bank. That's really interesting. Hope the folks like it. Yeah, I think, I think they will, that's fun. Interesting uh, story, I hope you like this one. Subscribe, we'll see you next time. Bye guys.